Welcome everyone to the Film Vault. I'm uh, going to start off here with a little healthy round of the confession. It says Anderson, I'm Brad Bishop, your hosts for this round of what we've seen this week. The flex that we've seen uh, condensed down into handy little reviews for you. Uh, we'll confess the flex and call it Flex mm, I'm good, Anderson, buddy. How, how are you, you buddy? It's really not your business, but uh, I'll tell you joke. anyway. Will you good. workshop that one last night? Today, maybe in the shower? I use that. I use that. So you've been workshopping. We'll continue to workshop it because it's not quite there yet. Uh, I just noticed for the first time, and this is the only second time that we've done this format, that uh, it's a bit of a mix up for you, a bit of a a bit of a change up for you, uh, throwing or, 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 you know, announcing the, uh, doing the top of the show because you usually be like, top five time, it's top five. I do the whole thing. And now you're like, I have flick fashions for you. I got a bunch of. Uh, we're gonna <laughs> welcome to the show where we don't. Have you don't want to work on that. Maybe, uh, maybe uh, you know. We just uh, I share with you. I mean, you already know a couple of the movies that will be flick fasting. The listeners all know by now because they see it in the title there. But maybe uh, just make sure I have like three movies for you to announce uh, that will be uh, run down by the end of the show. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Cool. Sure. I'm down. I don't like it. I, I like it. It's more work for me. I just realized that. I like it a lot. I love it. <laughs> all right. It. Hey. I am very excited about uh, this this round of flick fashion all because I saw some really good shit since I talked to you last, Brian, and I feel like yeah, probably you did as well. Yeah, I think we're gonna we're gonna line up on a couple of these. Um, do you feel more relaxed now that you're not? Uh, what's funny is the total recording time still takes actually probably takes more time, but uh, you uh, choose to feel mm-hmm. less stressed about the time. Yeah, spent I mean recording. that's that's I've been saying that since the beginning, Brian. I don't like. Uh, you're peculiar. I can't peculiar say that word. So it's, are you taunting me? Are you are you trolling me, Brian? I almost called you Greg. I was hoping you'd, you'd uh, fall asleep. Peculiar. Suit. I can't say it. Peculiar. Hey, I, that was maybe the best pronunciation I've ever made. Hey. No, I just didn't like. I didn't like putting Get out um, uh, two and a half, three hour uh, shows. I, I I don't think. Hey, look, I love the listeners. I love the listeners we have, and uh, there's many listeners who have been there since the very beginning, since before the Orange Couch days, and there's new listeners who just stumble across us, but there's few and far between. Since and a lot of a beginning. lot of people have said, "Hey, look, I was going to listen to like the Vaulties, and I saw the, the time two hours twenty minutes. It's like, what, what do you what do you think? Uh, you know, I got that kind of time on my hands. It's it's not doing us any favors by having these big, giant, fat, bloated shows. So I've always been under the like. I used to think we should have hour long, tight hour shows, uh, but more recently I've been like, let's try and keep it to like ninety minutes. And in doing so, I'm watching the clock. Um, I'm realizing that we're you know doing another very long show like we are right now because you're asking me these questions. Plus. The wife started like uh, putting in food orders and saying, "Hey, uh, Wednesday nights uh, we're gonna hang out after you're done with uh, the film vault, and uh, you know we can watch something together and maybe have a little uh, little dinner together." So then I started, I started yeah, sweating, to watch. sweating that, and now uh, that I've told her, "Hey, listen, I, I we're doing a Tuesday nights, and I am off limits. Uh, I can't help you out. Uh, I I'm I'm not worried at all about the time. I'm not worried about the time at all, and it makes me feel a whole lot better. Look at us, foot loose, fancy free." We can never have a little yeah. like this time. We, I mean, we can afford to do so, whereas before we couldn't, Brian. However, uh, I don't need to uh, spend a bunch of time kibitzing with you. I can tell you that. I want to get straight to the movies e- either way. I, like, what I was starting to say before you uh, derailed the program was uh, this this here episode and the movies that we are going to cover is my, my favorite thing about doing this show. I don't know about you, Brian, but I love talking about movies that otherwise aren't being talked about that are fantastic and like helping people who are, might be listening, like, Thanking them for listening by saying check check out these movies they're fucking fantastic I love it absolutely I I like to take movies that you've brought to me and then turn to Twitter and make them well, I know that my I know own this. recommendations yes, yes. that is truly one of the most pleasing <laughs> aspects of the show <laughs> just this week on the uh, Patreon message boards which is what I I the comments is what I uh, I see most often because every time I get a comment on Patreon through the film vault my phone chimes and I and I read it immediately sometimes it's hurtful they they still are. are even though they're uh, pay, paying listeners, they're still uh, somewhat mean sometimes, every now and again. Usually not. But uh, just a couple days ago, somebody said, hey, fantastic uh, job, Brian, uh, recommending. Oh, what was it? What was it? What did I recommend? Something, something really good, very good. Probably. I'll more on that later. But then they gave you uh, credit for uh, uh, patty cakes, which continues to hurt me. And they were doing it. They were doing it just yeah. to bug me. Just to bug me. Yeah. Well. I brought that to the show, so here we are. What was the movie that... Um, oh, I, you know what it was? Why you know what it was? It was a uh, 40-year-old version. What? They're giving you credit for that. Oh, yeah. I, I'm glad I, I brought believe. that to the show. 
I've, I've improved everyone's. I've All improved right. everyone's. Hey, uh, before we get to the show, we've already uh, convinced uh, way too much uh, as far as I'm concerned. Let's start rushing. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Well, let's not forget that the number one people. I'm think joking, people Brian. Like show, Keep up, buddy. The, Come. The friendship. Uh, the friendship. Yeah. The friendship. Hey, I just uh, speaking of the, the friendship. Uh, right. I just uh, released on the uh, classic uh, episodes, the, uh, the into the archive. I released the uh, disturbing, top five most disturbing orange couch rendition, oh, which no. was a uh, it was a very good uh, list, a very fun show. And I, I I was heard telling you not to watch certain movies because I, I worried about your soul. You've you've, you've assigned them all to well, me. I know. In the I mean, that just goes to show you how you've you behaved and and and. Absolutely. Oh, I brought it I mean, they're all punishments, Brian. Yes. Yes. Mm. That's, that's, that's interesting how you look at the show. Hey, hey, like us time. It's been a minute since we've been able to do that. We, it's been a while since we did some. some Huge uh, thanks to, like to Robert Jarosinski, Jarosinski, who uh, brought us one of our three or four uh, picks today that we will be talking about. And that pick is The Climb. More on that later. He came to us with the pick. Uh, as one of the assigners, you too can be an assigner by being a Patreon level at the $25 level, uh, Patreon for six months or more. After the six months is up and you've been the $25 level, you can assign us a movie to flick fest within reason. And I, I hate to say this to you, Rob, but, uh, I would have seen the climb anyways. It was on my list. I was very excited about it. And after seeing it, I definitely would have assigned it to Brian for sure. Uh, all right. Um, let's get to right. a little. Fan Fliction, which is a list of what the uh, what the list, a select few of what the listeners have been uh, watching since we talked last. And this is thanks to Mitch Burns. If you would like to uh, let Mitch and us know what you've been watching since you last uh, listened to the program, you can do so on our Twitter uh, at the Film Vault, uh, Facebook, Facebook uh, Film Vault, the Film Vault, I should say. Film Vault, something very different. And then also, of course, most importantly, our Instagram at Anderson and Brian. Uh, this is SLC Movie Junkie on Twitter. I appreciate the uh, Salt Lake City Movie Junkie re- uh, responding or letting us know that uh, they saw. I saw Mank. Is, and is he a fan of uh, Clean Flex? I don't think so because he watched or she watched Mank. And here's what SLC, SLC Movie Junkie said: I saw Mank and RKO 281, and the guys were right. And the guys oh, were wow. right. RKO 281 was way better. I have to agree, but I hate saying that publicly because it makes me f- seem like even more of a Philistine. But I, I agree. Yeah, like a yeah, like a yeah, del- yeah. like a delder. A simpleton. I think Fincher is trying to capitalize on the yay socialism movement that swept the Oscars last year to where it was uh, wasn't even historically accurate. Like Irving didn't commit suicide; he died from pneumonia. All right. Well, now I feel like we gave away the key, the key twist. I, I don't think that has anything to do with anything. <laughs> anything, to do with anything. I will say, you know what? I, I, I can see what you're saying. Uh, SLC. What's the listener's name again? Movie Junkie. That's right, SLC Clean Flicks. Uh, I can see what you're what you're getting at. However, I think this was just, you know, how sometimes Anderson when when something it could be it could be a project, it, lines it could up, be it gets a lucky. decision you make finan. Well, it could be no, it could be a decision a decision mm. you make financially, but it's too close to you. It's too close mm. to your heart. You're you're you're, you're in po- in poker, or if you're uh, making a bet on your favorite team, you're betting with your heart, not your head. Like I feel like that's maybe what Fincher was doing with this. Like he was so close to it. his dad wrote the script. He's trying to make it for decades. It seems like, and it's just it just it didn't I, I, it didn't come together like I think it came together in his head. And also, you know, he had his dad that he was thinking about and he didn't want to let his dad down and his dad was no longer around. And, uh, but I did feel, and I mentioned this in our, in our review of it, that he was shoehorning in quite a, quite a bit of uh, contemporary politics to, and that, well, that's, sure. that's pandering to the left. That's pandering to Hollywood. Yes. But I don't think, you I know don't, how I, f- but I don't think that was the, weakness it was one of the, the weaknesses. Movie. Like you, that could one be of the good or bad. The lack of comedy could, in a comedic movie was also a, a, a glaring weakness. I think it was overall poorly conceived. And this is still a good movie. It's just, you know, just, uh, I'd rather watch it. I know I'm really, really uh, by myself when I say this, but I felt like it was miscast. Like Mank wasn't really that compelling of a character. Oh, I agree. I totally agree. And he was old when he would, didn't. I won't be surprised if he's up for best actor. I don't know, but of course he's very white. Oh, let me mention this too. There was some, there's some patter. There was some talk. There's some back and forth on the old uh, Patreon uh, comments over there. Uh, I'm not, I'm not jamming Patreon on your f- throat. I'm just, this is, this is how I communicate with a lot of the listeners. All right. And, uh, I was being accused of, uh, saying, Hey, 
this is what I was accused of, and I, I hesitate to even say this because everything's taken out of context. And people, I get it. A lot of people half listen to these shows, and I talk very fast, and I got a lot of stuff going. I get that. Not a whole, you know, it's it's hard to be an active listener and you get it all. Uh, hear what I'm saying, but apparently this is what was heard by some. One person let me know. Now that man, that makes me believe that many other people probably thought this too, and they just didn't let me know. Here's what uh, was misconstrued. People believe that I said. Oh, you know what? I, I, I'm totally behind the idea of uh, people being nominated and uh, entered into festivals and nominated for awards clearly, uh, basically solely on the color of their skin that, and, or their, their gender. That's, that's what I'm all about, and that's what I want to happen. Mm-hmm. That's what I heard. It's just to, what do you assert just to go on the record. I, I did not say that, nor would I ever say that. And uh, I was what I was saying, and I want to get I don't want to get into it again, Brian, but I was saying like Sundance patting themselves on the back about all the lady directors and uh, magically they have a bunch of lady directors, uh, you know, recently, uh, but before they didn't. So the fact that they didn't have them before tells me that they were part of the problem or it's just pure coincidence or they're overcorrecting. Ah, That's all I'm saying. Yeah. We talked about this with the people. just not. Uh, Yeah. At least one person. So I mean, I am a liberal snowflake in many, many ways, but not to that extent. Let's, let's go. What of our millions of listeners, uh, one person uh, uh, got upset and you, uh, this must be rushed to the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you've learned in radio, maybe you didn't, but you get one caller and uh, there's that's that's one one tenth of one percent of the listening population. So if one person brought this up, that means that there's others who also misconstrued what I said. That's a good point. I, I, I was, there was my burner account who posted that, but uh, yeah, I, uh, I can't, I, I can't, that. uh, Blame you for being a troll, Brian. I mean, look at you. What else you got? Hey, <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> Nick Sparinsky on Facebook saw Street Gang, the behind-the-scenes documentary of Sesame Street, an awe-inspiring film reminiscent of yeah. Won't You Be My Neighbor. Five out of five stars. Did, it, what, did, did you see it through must the have. Sundance app? Did he do the, uh, the basketball pass? It doesn't pass, say here, pass? but he must have, because I don't believe that it's available yet on the old uh, streaming services. He also saw... Unless he's an editor or something, and he saw like a... a, a and then he saw it. Cusp, which is another one that was at uh, Sundance, I believe. A documentary about a group of That's teenage right. girls groping with life, and it's set back in Texas uh, one summer. What? A coming-of-age okay. story of tragic proportions. Harmony Corinne, Sean Baker, and Andrea Arnold would be proud. Four and a half stars out of five. All right. So, Nick, I'm right. uh, right. seeing some Sundance movies. And letting us know ahead of time how they were. So Cusp and uh, Street Gang. Cusp did not make uh, either one of our lists. lists. Well, it, it looked interesting. It's just, you know, I, I, I try to stick to five. Moore 23 on Instagram. So Dick Johnson is dead. Haven't heard the guys mention this one, but Dick Johnson is dead. is probably the most affecting documentary I've ever seen, as well as a unique spin on the genre itself. Equal parts heartwarming and heartbreaking as Kristen Johnson and her father try to accept the inevitability of loss through comedic fantasies and through conversations will stick with me forever if i wasn't a broke college student really i'd get a patreon and assign it to you guys well d more i'm I, I appreciate your uh your opinion uh i have heard uh, many people speak very highly of this documentary i i saw this documentary a few weeks ago and i have some very mixed feelings about it so i did not i did not bring i, I did not bring I but if brian Add it, add it, Brian add does it watch it. Uh, we will. Uh, I'll be able to chime in as well because I saw Dick Johnson is dead, and uh, it got a little a little tiresome after a while. A little tiresome. But I I loved him. Dick Johnson's fantastic. It's a it's a it's, a un, it's an eighty nine minute movie. How tiresome, tiresome can it get? I mean, it was a, kind of like the same. I, we'll it. talk about it when you see it. And then finally, Adam Kaplan on Facebook. The Sundance episode led to me uh, to watch Official Rejection, which then led to me watching 10 Till Noon. Official Rejection was solid, but a lot of the info I already knew, thanks to following Anderson for years, trying to make groupers. 10 Till Noon. Oh, 10 Till okay, Noon yeah. started off strong, and I enjoyed the layers being peeled back, but I felt the gimmick only ran so far, which hindered the second half of the film for me. Overall, a solid watch as well, and a good Tarantino ripoff, but I can also understand why so many major film festivals rejected it. Thank you all for your... Conti- oh, that's that's something I wrote, the thank you all. <laughs> all right. Thank you all. <laughs> Reminder. Yes. Uh, so, 
That is Fan Flick, Sean. And now it's time. Thank you very much for everyone who uh, submitted to that and contributed to the uh, Fan Flick. I love hearing what the listeners uh, have seen recently. Keep us uh, in the know, as it were, Brian. And now let's move on to uh, what we've seen recently. How about that? How do you like uh, that maps? Before we do that, Anderson, in the news, uh, a couple of uh, notable deaths of titans mm-hmm. of the industry, uh, act, uh, acting legends. Hal Holbrook, of course, passed away. Uh, uh, Oscar nominee for your favorite Into the Wild, and uh, another one of his contemporaries, another great actor, Dustin Diamond, uh, best better known as Screech from Saved by the Bell, passed away. I love how you you say like you're some kind of newscasters. Another uh, you also and uh, best known as Dustin best Diamond, known best known Screech, as Screech, also passed away. Hmm. Has succumbed to his uh, week long battle with cancer. Sad. He was like just. Uh, ah, it's like crazy. It is kind of crazy. Yeah, like he was. He was just days. like kind of cruising along and you know doing his thing, and then all of a sudden he's like, ah, I got a cough. Maybe it's COVID. No, nope, worse. Uh, lung cancer. Uh, three weeks later, done. Now you don't hear that very often. No, especially no. He was a year older. He than always me. reminded he's me a lot of years you. Old. Well, he was like a Brian with years. Brian with a lot of hair. That's not accurate. Didn't at all. they call you bald screech in high school? So what was that? A sneeze? What was that? What is that? <laughs> that was a sneeze. I'm, a, I'm allergic to it your bad jokes. That. It was solid. All right, here we go. Let's talk about the fucking movies that we've seen for the love of God. For God's sakes, <laughs> we were time. Time to confess. We, I was going to say we were assigned to film. I'm doing your job. We were assigned to film. Give us uh, the particulars who assigned it to us. Robert Jarosinski assigned this to us. Uh, he took a while. Uh, he came up with, I believe, one other that was a lot of the times what, what these listeners are doing who sign up for the assignment um, uh, uh, perk on Patreon, which I had misgivings about. I wasn't really sure about until uh, we actually started doing it. And I love getting the these these movies that are, are forced our way, like I, I said last week. But uh, what people are doing is like they're coming up with movies that are dear to them or they hadn't seen a long time since they were kids that aren't readily available even on disc. And but they're like, I can get a torrent copy for you or I can get, uh, you know, I could send you a burn DVD. And I'm like, I, I love the idea. However, I hate talking about a movie that no one else can see. You know what I mean? True. Yes, I so, agree. So uh, if that's your instinct, that's that's my reasoning as to why I've kind of talked people out of it. Are you going to assign whatever? But uh, RKO uh, 281 was one of those movies that's really hard to come by, but we were lucky enough that somebody uh, put a pirated version on YouTube. So uh, we, we went with it. Yeah, if there's like a movie that's lost to history or suppressed, like I flick fest uh, Song of the South, not because I ever want everyone to go track it down, but because I'm like, this is, I imagine it's like the, uh, the, 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 the explorer who's been in the cave and on the rest of the people are outside and he comes out like, what did you just see? It's like, well, yeah. let me tell you. A lot of racism. Yeah, and then you couldn't wait to give it to me and you really wanted me to watch it. I'm like, I have no interest in ever watching this. All right. You and no. the boy should watch it. And then you should, should do a video not, about it. But I am going to be doing videos about inappropriate Addy, things. Addy and Andy. Hey, I just released a new one. Addy I just released a new one today. Brian, as a, as a parent, you'll appreciate this. Uh, it was called the Yes Video. Uh, I sat in my garage with him where we do a lot of our videos. I put my timer to 30 minutes, my four-year-old and I, and I said, all right, for the next 30 minutes, as long as this timer is going, uh, anything you ask within reason, I will say yes to, uh, That as long as it stays in the garage. Like anything you want to play with or look at or get me, have me get down from like, you know, up above the shelf or like in the attic, I'll say yes to everything. And he didn't know what to do with himself. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And uh, then I... I <laughs> yeah, that's uh, too yeah, much uh, for Hey, you know what? He's only four and, uh, you know, he's still getting his faculties. So he didn't really take advantage. Like he, the worst it got was he was dressed up in ho- hockey gear, kind of stumbling around the garage. <laughs> It's a fun video, though. Fun video. <laughs> All right. Uh, All right. Talk about the, the climb. The climb. the climb. Yeah, take it away, Brian. Oh, well, I want to know who assigned Rob it Rob Jarosinski. I already said that. Jarosinski. I wanted to get the name out there okay. one more time. The Climb is a 2020 film directed by Michael Angelo Covino. It is written by Michael Angelo Covino and Kyle Marvin. It stars Michael Angelo Covino as Mike and Kyle Marvin as Kyle. Uh, this is a uh, 2020 film. It is 89% on Rotten Tomatoes. You have to rent this guy. Uh, I can think of a lot worse things to do with your $4. Uh, it's a brisk 95. It was $5.99 uh, HD version on the old Amazon. Yeah. 
Yeah, I for, oh, maybe it was five bucks or so. I don't know. Uh, 95, I don't pay attention to money. 95 minute movie, so it's not going to uh, take up a huge investment. Sorry. In, get my, it? My investment. In, investment. Get it? Investment in your life. Uh, Anderson, let's talk about the Let's climb. do it. Uh, I absolutely love this movie. Now, I previewed this movie with Greg Strzovosti, my better host over there on Cinema Dicks. I don't know why I'm being such a dick to you. I, I apologize, Brian. You, really? You know I love you. Out of your way. However. These that, are unforced errors. Uh, yeah, so with my better host over there on Cinema Dicks, uh, we, we preview movies before they come out. We take a look at what's, what's ahead. And uh, The Climb was on there. I had read enough that it seemed interesting, but the poster really looks like some kind of... It looks foreign. It looks sanctimonious, even though it's just two guys on 10 speeds. It just, it looks long, right? It looks, it looks like homework. And I don't know anyone. I don't know the cast. I just know that it's a comedy. I knew one, one, one of the cast members by the time it was all said and done. Actually, two of them. Guy from Cheers, too. Uh, and this movie is fan fucking tastic. I absolutely <laughs> I, love I, this I movie. Quite, I quite. I quite enjoyed it myself. This is one of the better uh, films we've been assigned. Uh, the climb was very enjoyable. So the idea, it's hard to describe. So it's funny because it's funny because the weakness of the climb, if there is a weakness, is it doesn't really have a strong narrative. Like the, the story bounces around a bit, but. If you're if you're gonna try that, if you're gonna have, make that be your movie, you better have some really good dialogue, some really fun characters, and it has all of that. Like the movie's very fun. It's funny. There are a couple of loud, couple. loud, loud moments, and uh, I enjoyed. Yeah, a couple. I mean, I laughed throughout, but a couple like. I mean, I the like, opening that's, scene that's alone. Really joke, the opening really scene alone premise. could work as a short. Like that could have just been its own little short. Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's pretty it's, it's pretty great. The characters uh, interact. If you enjoy Anderson and I's interaction, you will let me, enjoy let this me, uh, Let me just give you a quick setup because Brian's struggling here uh, with talking about what the movie's about. It's just about two guys that have a, a long-term friendship and the ebbs and the flows of their friendship. And it's told in chapter form, which a lot of the time it works out pretty well. And the two, the two characters are reminiscent of one, John C. Riley, and the other one is newcomer to the show and to us and to a lot of you who have watched Thunder Road and uh, The Wolf of Snow Mountain, Snow Hollow, and that is Jim Cummings, uh, who was a uh, revelation. Yeah, it's got a bit of, it's got, I, I wrote down, it's got a little bit of uh, a little bit of Thunder Road vibe. There is even a, a funeral speech gone around. There is. In so movie. Michelangelo... Covino, who wrote, directed, and stars, he's it's a two-hander, and he's one of the he's it's two banana. He's a second banana, first banana, depending on how you're looking at it. And uh he feels very Jim Cummings, but he doesn't quite have the kinetic energy, but he does feel like him. And his friend, uh, played by somebody I'm not familiar with. I've never seen him before. Yeah, Kyle. Kyle. Uh he he's kind Mike of like Kyle? Yeah, Mike, Mike, I'm Mike talking about Kyle? Mike and Kyle, that's right. Uh oh, no, that's his name, Kyle Marvin. He Yes, he reminds me a little bit of uh, John C. Riley. He's like a, a younger John C. Riley, but he's, he's just kind of like unassuming. When John C. Riley's doing the comedian thing, unassuming, doughy, really, really nice, kind of like, kind of like a little baby kind of Huey ish, right? Yeah, a little innocent. And it's Man told child. through these chapters. So this, without giving anything away, I'll give you the chapters and let, gives you an idea of what the what the movie's about. It starts with "I'm sorry," and it opens with them on a like a road in the French Alps, uh, and they're on ten speed bikes, and there's just a car following them, and it's uncut. It's a wonder, and it's probably nine minutes long, and there's a lot. Uh, a physical comedy going on here while they're riding their bikes up and uh, uh, on this mountain road and the dialogue back and forth is biting and uh, revelatory and uh, life changing life altering for both the characters. There's um, honesty uh, over the top honesty. And then uh, also a, uh, a fight scene. Well, I, I don't even want to give anything away uh, any more away, but that, so the first title we see is I'm sorry. And then that's the next nine minutes. And then the next one is let go. Followed by number three, which is thanks. It's broken. Stop it. Grow up. Fine. And all of those make perfect sense after having watched the ensuing chapter unfold. Each chapter, I should say, is told in absolute one or fashion. So they're all oneers. It's all. Well, yeah, it's, it's as though. I mean, there's a lot of long shots. And there's uh, maybe like two cheats, out, Brian. Cheats. Uh, now, they, they open up with like tableaus and, and vignettes like the skiing duo, <laughs> just to let you know that we're going to be on the mountaintop here. Uh, a lot of edits with that, but then once the action begins, uh, other than the one in the house where they I, they were going down into the basement, or I think they went into a wall and it turned black, and you could see that was a cheat. But right. a lot of these, there's no cheats, no visible cheats, no noticeable cheats, anyways. And 
Well, regardless, yeah, there's a lot of long yeah, takes. Yeah, it's mostly movie. made up of long takes. And it's just, it's it earns all of its laughs, and it's 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 so um, intentional. Like, there's a scene, without giving anything away again, but there's a scene where a car, a truck is parked in the middle of the road, and a car could probably go around it, but doesn't want to, and the car is honking, and then a fight almost ensues, and the guy gets in the car, and as the car is driving away, you notice that it's a student driver car, right? <laughs> it's a fight doesn't ensue. No, it didn't ensue. It almost did. But it's like, th that was a funny scene, but M Michael, <laughs> Angelo Sorvino, to make it be a uh, Covino, to make it be a, a student driver is just that extra little oomph, you know, that shows that, like, he really spent time. I thought it was the teacher. I thought, I thought, I thought it probably was the teacher. The teacher. I, I'm saying that the car was a student driver car. Oh, oh and, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so Michael Angelo, Angelo Covino, another newcomer. Uh, this is a guy that I will absolutely watch anything that he makes next. And, I'm, you know, he's got a lot of, like, like I said, Jim Cummings. I don't know if there's enough room in Hollywood for these two guys. I don't know. I don't know. I uh, particularly enjoyed the um, the scene. I guess it was the third chapter that takes place entirely at the house where uh, uh, Mike uh, comes to visit, and he's not in a good shape. And uh, it, it's cool from a technical point of view because the camera stays outside the house for that whole scene almost. Like once Mike oh, gets there, it kind of tells the story through the window. Remember that's what's going the second on half the house? of that. The first one is all inside, and it's during Thanksgiving. And then right. they move outside. And they do that thing where it's, I think it's Christmas. I think it's, it's Christmas. It well, opens with Thanksgiving, the and then they move outside. One continuous shot, Brian, and you can see that uh, it goes into time lapse, and the con camera continues to move. It's a little bit like this is a little rough around the edges. Like there are some warbles. Like you can see the camera operation happening now again, now and again, and you know that the camera operator is like, "Oh fuck, please don't we we don't want to have to start over just because of me." And let me tell you, this movie works without the one gimmick, but I appreciate it that much more. Yeah, that's an added, that's a cherry on top of this uh, And And then, so it did this, this time lapse where it goes from, you know, uh, through the night and then now it's, now it's nighttime and it was daytime when the camera first went out and it goes up on a new character and we realized, we quickly realized, oh wait, it wasn't just, it didn't go from just day to night. It like changed seasons. It's Christmas now when they, it was really clever, like really, really well mapped out and thought out. And then Brian's right. Like when it goes back, it stays outside the house and we're almost like uh, peeping Tom's kind of listening in on, on this family gathering. Yeah. Voyeurs. This uh, premiered. I, I don't know. I was going to say oh, this premiered at. I was going to talk about that. I was going to talk about that. Producer, cut all this. I'm so, I'm. I'm going to talk about that scene some more. Um, I don't know if you caught this yes, or of not. Course I, did. I don't know how you watch this. Okay. The uh, audio looping on this movie is fantastic. It's like another added um, joke to the movie. Like there's this. So in that same scene, Mike is not in a good place in his life. Mike is uh, drinking too much when he pulls up to the hey, house. You're, you're giving a little too much away. Yeah, you're giving a little too much this is, this is nothing. This is the third chapter yeah, out of still. nine. This is, this is, anyway, uh, Mike... Um, the booze catches up with Mike and he passes out drunk and he crushes a coffee table in the middle of this Christmas party. And uh, off screen, they have this uh, so audio looping is when they have someone record audio afterwards that, you know, either could be background or could be you know, nothing. But the grandma who's there, she goes, maybe he just lost his balance. And then uh, the, uh, the brother, uh, the uncle... <laughs> The uncle, uh, as soon as he like face down, Mike goes face down under the coffee table, uh, passed out drunk. Uh, the uh, uncle, that guy, yeah, because he was a football legend. That's right. So I'm, I'm, that I'm glad you did bring that up though, because there are a lot of little asides, a little small moments. I found myself rewinding a couple times. Like, did I just hear him say that? And what what was that look that she just gave? There's a lot of little moments in this movie. This is the type of movie that I would have spent a lot of time with back in the day uh, before I, uh, you know, I was doing the show and I was a dad and all that. This is the kind of movie I'd watch two, three times, especially if it was in the theaters. I'd probably continue to go back and see it in the movie theaters uh, over and over again. This is a movie that I am like in love with. I love this movie. And I thank uh, Rob for bringing it to us sooner than later. Uh, it was on my list, but you know, you never know. There was a chance that maybe I, I just never got to it because there's not a whole lot of this premiere to cons back in 2019. I don't think COVID's doing it any favors. Uh, I I mean, this is the type of movie that should be up for awards. It's it's that good. It's really good. Yeah, it was supposed to be released in March of last year. God, this is a, almost a year yeah. later. It's coming out. Um, yeah, I hope it's. Uh, 
I hope I got a little bit of attention. This is a fun, I mean, it's a little movie, you know, it, maybe it might not, but uh, it's fun. It's smart. Solid cold open, by the way. We discussed that uh, last week. Is it a cold, is it a cold, cold open, open or is that just the first chapter? They just, they just, they now they just go right in. Well, I guess the whole first Do we get the, the title open, after the, right into the, the, bike the cold open? Usually you get, you get the title card course. after the first scene takes place. And I don't remember the, uh, I don't it's remember the question. client. I think the client it's came before. I guess so. I, I don't I think it's a call. It. Hey, but uh, you know, six bucks, five ninety nine for a rental. Uh, you know, I know there's a ton of stuff out there that you can watch. It's already part of like whatever uh, subscription you got. But uh, this is a this is a really good. I didn't feel like I made a poor choice by by spending six bucks on this at all. Uh, it's a movie that I would spend that wow. uh, in the theater. I'd spend double that in the theater. Uh, I love this movie. I absolutely love this movie. And a perfect ending. And I would Enjoyable. actually like to talk about the ending with you, Brian, off air. But uh, did you pick up on the ending? What was going on there? Did you see what happened there? Hold on, let me look and see. Let me let me remind myself. Uh, oh, Careful. Yeah, with the, uh, but yeah, uh, with the, uh, but I mean like, that's a pretty that's a pretty uh, it's a pretty fucked up ending. Um, was it? Uh, oh yeah, I think I think Cadence. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, we'll talk about right, that cool. here. I don't know if we can do a spoiler. I don't know if there's enough here for us. Yeah, is there enough here for a spoiler? Do we spoil the fuck out of this? No. Uh, okay. Huh? I mm. I don't think right. so, but we can. Well, if you didn't want me to talk about him passing out on the coffee table, yeah, I didn't want you doing that. But uh, so then maybe there's maybe there's things to talk about. Well, all right, we'll let's uh, take a quick uh, let's, let's talk. Let's take a quick break. Let's take a look at Amazon before we come back. Oh, all right, then after we, after we come, let's say yeah, before we get, yeah, let's take a break. I'm playing some music. I never know what's I never know what's going uh, on around here. Go ahead, throw a break. No, oh, coming up next. That's right. My, that's my line. See, this whole new format has got me, uh, mm. got me all twisted. Uh, coming up next, we will continue the flick fashions with uh, some very interesting choices, uh, and we will uh, go over the Amazon purchases next. Uh, I don't know where to go with this. Where to go with this? Oh yeah, the, you know what? Uh, I, I, it's been a couple of two, three years maybe since I really highlighted textbooks. No, nope. thank you guys you for getting your textbooks ago. through us. What? No, no. But I, I mentioned one, and it reminded me that like, oh yeah, people are buying textbooks. And uh, thank you very much for buying your textbooks through us. Somebody got Truman's Scientific Guide to Pest Management Operations, seventh edition. Uh, perhaps they are majoring in uh, agriculture. Perhaps they're going to UC Davis. <laughs> It's the only the first agriculture right. school I thought of. The only? Maybe Viticulture. The only. Viticulture. Viticulture. No, Texas A&M, obviously. Okay. There's, many, there's, many, there's right. many examples. But perhaps uh, they're uh, studying to be a uh, viticulturalist. All right, scholar boy, move on. Other things purchased on the Amazon click-through banner. This is up Anderson and Include, somebody's getting ready for the big game, uh, TCL 55-inch 4K UHD Dolby Vision HDR QLED Roku Smart TV was purchased. That is obviously the newest edition with all the bells and whistles. Uh, Anderson and I both uh, have uh, uh, TCL TVs in our home, and uh, you can't do any better it's for the price. That is the uh, best. We love for your the box. TCL. We love. Hey, Indeed. Uh, Brian, you know how you Taylor just, real quick, you know how you uh, just said the big game, and it, it bugs me every single year. Just hearing you say it right there, I thought about it for the first time ever. We could probably just call it something else that rhymes, like the Super Bowl, right? Like, because sure. I mean, a lot of people get drunk. I know a lot of domestic violence occurs on the Super Bowl day, and people are in stupor. So, like, what if everyone just start started calling it the? I, th I feel like we should start a movement. Everyone's oh, just like, good. instead of, the, instead of like, the big game, or, you know, that uh, thing we can, then they bleep it. Uh, can't say it. I'm going to say it. Like, they're, they're doing that one on, on some kind of ad that I'm seeing all the time right now. We should start going to the Super Bowl. Well, on the one hand, I think we're too small to attract No, no, no. no. We're, we're plenty big enough. Let's Super do Super Bowl. Bowl. Tech, secondly, I don't, we're not really selling anything. So, uh, you know, it's not like, hey, get your Super Bowl blank here, you know, like, is it's a trademark? We're just talking about the Super Bowl, which of course you're allowed to do. But I don't mind Super Bowl. I, I feel That's like fine. we should start spreading the word. Super Bowl! Heard it here first. Not, yeah, yeah I wish going? you would. Taylor made stand 8.0 bag. Uh, it's a golf bag for your golf clubs. 
B2C2B ergonomic leather executive office chair was picked up. Someone got themselves an Arlo video doorbell. Truman scientific guide I mentioned. Good luck with that. Streamlight ultra stringer uh, LED flashlight. Steiner Safari ultra sharp binoculars. Two Venkyo Bluetooth earbuds. Logitech 30. wireless keyboard and mouse combo. Whiskey number seven fiber bicycle seat post, Western Digital four terabyte external hard drive, Tascam lavalier microphone, Spotlight wireless outdoor solar powered security camera, Ten. Bovi tuned to air Bluetooth car kit, 80 feet of heavy Five. duty Cat 8. They're already up to Cat 8. Uh, category Ethernet cable, 600 Scotch thermal laminating pouches. Uh, Phillips 66 Aviation Oil, Great Go Turbo Booster, High Back Booster Seat, Five. and I'm going to nail that post. 240, uh, 240 Easy Go Products, Eco Stick, Fat Wood Kindling was purchased. All right, I'll give you an extra few seconds because sec, I derailed with the Stuper Bowl. Yeah. Stupid Stuper Bowl. Every time I say stupid. <gasps> Mom, that's not a bad word. I'm like, what other bad words do you know? He's like, uh, stupid, dumb, what the fuck? I'm like, okay, let's just stop right there. Those, yeah. okay. those well, are the three bad words he knows. <laughs> Stupid, dumb, and what the fuck. And it's always what oh. the fuck. Those are the, yeah. That's pretty <laughs> bad. I mean, I, he sees me laugh every time, and I hate that I laugh, but I can't help it. Like, we're watching hockey, and, like, the Rangers. That's hilarious. That's the Rangers, like, the, like, the other team will score against my beloved Penguins, and I'll be like, ah, oh, man. What happened, Dad? Uh, the Rangers just scored. What the fuck, Rangers? I'm like, dude, come on. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's funny, but stop, please. <laughs> You got to bring him to a hockey game. Here are the movies that are clicked since the last since the last time I talked at you. All. Two people got promising young women, woman. Uh, the Descent was clicked through as well as the box. Nightmare on Elm Street five. People are still going with the Nightmare on Elm Street, the Dream Child. Nightmare on Elm Street four, the Dream Master. Freddy's dead. The final nightmare again, Brian. Big trouble in Little China. Uh, China. Southland Tales. Horror of Dracula. Pulp Fiction. The Jacket. Casino Royale, Quantum of Solace, Hot Rod for tears. This is the end. Never sleep again. The Elm Street Legacy. Live. Oh, no, no. Edge of Tomorrow. Let's click through. The Babadook. Paddington. Paddington 2. Fuck the S. Fuck the S. Terminator 2. Judgment Day. It follows. Blue Mountain State. The Rise of Thadland. Thadland. All right, I got to start my music over again. I got to start. Uh, let's put it right there. That sounds good to me. Uh, Donnie Darko's uh, click through as well as Corpus Christi. Fuck to the ass on both mortal engines. Never saw. Blockers click through as well as Let's Be Cops. Mike and Dave need wedding dates. Remember when that was kind of like the, the thing where like, people were just having like full like, uh, dude, where's my car? Like, just kind of like sayings, almost full sentences. Mike and Dave need what? Who want? Kumar. Yeah, I saw that in the of course theater. you did. It's it was, such a brand. Uh, it was Tenet okay. was clicked through as well as The World's End. Okay. The Kid Detective heard good things. Forbidden Planet. Princess Ma, uh, Ma, Ma, Mononoke. I've seen, I've seen exactly. it a hundred times. I've seen that title a hundred times and I've never actually tried to say it. Len, as well as Lord of the Rings, the motion picture trilogy. The motion picture trilogy. All right. Thanks for enduring. Apologize for my poor reading. Now back to the program. Welcome back. Time to continue the Flick Fashions with some more movies we saw this week. Anderson, I uh, got a couple of um, alarmed uh, communique from uh, well, the system listeners who were like, oh, this is Anderson trying to kill the gambling segment. You guys did new gambling last week. It's like, oh, innocent is a mistake. We both uh, realized it as soon as the mics were shut off. And uh, 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 gambling was rectified. Uh, off air, of course, I signed Anderson a movie. We should talk about that movie, Anderson. Let's do that. Let's talk about a little in and of itself. Derek Del Guadio's in and of itself is the technical full title, which sucks because every time I search for in and of itself, like it is not finding it. And yeah. it's like, you mean Derek Del Guadio? Yes, I mean fucking Derek Del Guadio's. It makes it difficult. It makes it difficult. I like on- it half a star less now. I like it half a star less. Oh, you know, what? I'm glad you brought that up. Right, let's talk about strikes and you assigning me movies. All right. Because this formula came to me just this week uh, while walking my dog, if you must know. I was walking my dog and my son. And that's where I do my best thinking. I ignore the two of them, and I just kind of, uh, you know, <laughs> walk down the street thinking things. And I Perfect. thought, Perfect. I thought Brian uh, pisses me off a lot with his his assignments. I'm like, let's think about this. And I realized here here are the three strikes. All right, Brian, uh, one strike. It's going to be a documentary. 
most of the time you're, you're assigning me movies that are a documentary. Uh, second strike, it's some kind of music documentary. Or third strike, it's just a terrible movie. With this one, with uh, uh, in, it, in, it, in and of itself, only one strike. Oh, really? Yeah. Look at the documentary aspect. Yeah. And it's funny because I don't know. I mean, you would describe it in the broadest terms as a documentary, right? Like, I recommend people lo- know as little about this as possible going into it. I wish I knew less uh, because, and it's you can't avoid How is that this. possible? But when you first, when, when the movie's opening, they let you know that this is a show that uh, was ran in New York for 522 consecutive shows. And I wish I didn't know that because that bothered me and distracted me throughout because I kept reminding myself, oh, he's doing, he's done this 520 or some odd times. He's, he's doing an act and it kind of, kind of bugged me when he was emotional. Really? But, yeah. but, but did you, eh, Derek Tocquadio is in and of itself, uh, 2020 uh, documentary, <laughs> question mark. You know what I think, I think we, we do is we do spoil this one. All right. We do a spoiler uh, only episode for this one because there's a lot to talk about and I don't want to give anything away. You're absolutely right. Uh, there's a lot of revelations and a lot of reveals. Uh, I was redundant right there. And uh, one one of the reveals was that my my wife is a monster. Uh, I watched this with her, <laughs> and she uh, she announced 30 minutes in that she was bored. And then I started, told you not to do that. I specifically I said don't watch the Jillian. I you know what I we had a night together, and I'm like we had nothing to watch. I'm like I'm, I'm just gonna put it on and see and see how it goes. 30 minutes in, she goes okay, I'm bored, and this is all. Uh, and then she started using adjectives and uh, got a little bit. Angry. She's a little skeptical. Uh, but yeah, here, here's what we can say about this movie, Brian. And that directed is directed by Frank Oz, yeah. directed by Frank Oz, Grover, starring Grover Derek himself, Tugwadio, Derek Tugwadio, hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes. I just learned that today. I was surprised. I could see enough people like Jillian out there in the world who maybe would drag the score down a little bit. Uh, this is streaming on Hulu. Anderson, what did you uh, think of Derek Tugwadio's in and of itself? Uh, he's the devil. And I am the rulet- <laughs> I am the ruletista. Right. The ruletista. Ruletista. I am the ruletista. So I don't know how many of you have seen like uh, Spalding Gray's uh, Swimming to Cambodia. Is that the one that uh, Stol- Soderbergh directed? Soderbergh directed one of Spalding Gray's uh, one-man shows. He did two of them. Swimming to Cambodia is the, the best known one. And I remember being blown away by that. Uh, but that was years ago. Uh, they've come a long way with technology and filmmaking. And uh, this is... Uh, another one man show that is shot entirely on location, um, from the audience, from real, the stage. In real time, I have to assume. I don't think so. No, I think that they, no, I know that they took from a number no, of no, different No, no, sorry. What I mean is they, cl- they were clearly, uh, I see yeah, what you're it was clearly Frankenstein and it was clearly like some close up shots, especially of the card tricks, but it is presented as though the show is beginning you know, to end. Happening. Yeah, beginning yes. to end. And uh, this this Delgadio guy is very very clever. He's very good at what he does. Uh, he's a great storyteller, and uh, he makes you think for sure. And uh, he's a he's a magician uh, by trade. And he's an illusionist. An illusionist and uh, a storyteller, but he takes it to the next level. Like uh, you know, he takes what David Blaine does and what card trick guys do and what storytellers do, and he combines them all to make a very thought-provoking, uh, emotional uh, evening out, uh, essentially one that you'll probably never forget if you're in the audience. And uh, I was- I got tweets from people that said, I've, I've, I went in New York, I went five times. Oh yeah, I could see that. Huh? Uh, notable names, I guess. There's really none other than David Blaine himself, who- uh, B- Bill Gates makes cameo. And Bill Gates. Bill Gates and David Blaine. There's a couple other people that I kind of recognized. Um, Larry Wilmore was there. Yeah. But uh, kind of hard to talk about it beyond that without giving a bunch of stuff away. Uh, so maybe we don't do that here. I don't think we do. I think uh, it's probably smart not to. But it's it's engaging. And it's uh, despite what my, my, my monster of a wife said, it's not boring. I didn't find it boring at all. And I was really, really it, uh, impressed with this I've, guy's storytelling ability and how he could craft a show like this. Like agreed. This, there's very little fat on the show. Uh, it was very inventive from the beginning to the end. Uh, the props that were used were minimal, but they were effective and fantastic. And I, I had no, I, I love the, uh, the artistic choices really liked it. Yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that. I've actually seen it twice now, once by myself, just checking it out for the show. And I, I was so blown away that I was like, Christy, Christy is, is the opposite of Jillian in a lot of respects. And I'm like, you're going to really 
really enjoyed this. You should watch it. And she turns it on. So I saw it for a second time. And uh, you can pick up on a lot more. Um, I was aware, in Jillian's defense, I was aware that the first 30 minutes or a little more of like, you know, uh, on ramp, you know what I mean? Until you got onto the freeway when it really picks, it really picks up around the letter reading uh, aspect. That was the uh, only part where I got emotional. Cause you, I remember you saying that you got emotional a few times and uh, the letter reading thing, it was hard not to get emotional. Jillian had checked out. She didn't see that part, but uh, I, I wasn't sobbing, but uh, yeah, I was getting teary eyed for sure. Watching these people, uh, completely expose themselves on stage, like like, like they did emotionally, and they they, they had. Right. Now I want I want answers, so Brian and I didn't do a whole lot of digging because I didn't want to come on this uh, program and, and and give stuff away, and I'm glad that I didn't that I don't have a whole lot to give away even in the uh, spoiler section, but I'm sure answers could be found, and we'll talk a little bit about that in the yeah, spoiler. I'm intentionally avoiding the answers that I'm sure are out there. I I don't doubt there's all Reddit thread, you know, explaining how everything was done. That's fine. That's part of going to see an illusionist or a magician or whatever is like being if he can he or she can like sweep you away with the with the illusion then it's like great you've done your job i don't need to know how it's done mm. i'm 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 sold mm -hmm. tell that to uh you know what i mean it's like and tell her. it's kind of like i don't know in a weird way it's kind of like going to see a special effects movie and then and then being like i must know how they did all those special effects like who well, cares I mean, I the movie I'd, was, I'd the like movie is either it. good or bad i can answer the, the question for you brain uh mm. computer generated imagery Rulatista. Rulatista. I'm the Rulatista. 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 Do you believe that the uh, post-it guy was a real thing, or do you think that uh, he made up a lot of that stuff? What is the post-it guy? The book. And the one guy that just talked about the other guys, the other people. Oh, uh, yeah, I believe that. Yeah, I could see that. All right, let's let's say I mean, think about think about the audience that would be drawn to that. They're mm. more a little more artistic, a little see, more Jillian, perspective. Jillian thinks that that is all part of the uh, the act, as it were. It could definitely be, but it would strike me that that doesn't seem like it's worth falsifying. Poor elephant. Okay. Hey, anyone can see that. If you have Hulu, you can watch this on Hulu, and then uh, you can listen to our spoiler discussion, however long that may be, which will be uh, on the Patreon feed. Uh, thank God we got that so we can do things like that, because I definitely want to talk to you about some stuff. With yes, definitely. In, I, I, in and of itself. I found it quite affecting. Uh, Anderson enjoyed it. Everyone, I've heard almost universal praise uh, from the people I've recommended it to oh. on Twitter or wherever. <laughs> so uh, th this is worth uh, this is worth exploring. Is my my wife the only one you've heard anything negative from? Actually, in terms of like <laughs> the only, yeah, I think it is actually the only person who's had like a negative reaction. Like couldn't finish it. Like everyone is either the re the reactions have ranged from oh my god, I love this, is amazing to. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, some of the tricks, you know, were a little whatever, but it was pretty good. Like, that's probably the most critical thing I'd heard until this very moment. So, there you go. I mean, my least favorite parts were the uh, the action, the, the reaction shots from the audience. That always makes me uncomfortable, whether it's like a comedy uh, live show that I'm watching uh, on HBO or, or I, I'm you know, an illusion show like this. I just leave the audience alone. I don't like to see them. It makes me feel uncomfortable when I see them looking at each other laughing or like going, oh, you know, I just hate it. I fucking hate right. it, Brian. I just, it makes my skin crawl. I don't want to see those bit, people. It was a... Uh it was a little bit rote. You know what I mean? Like you kind of have to have it in there, but I like, do, yeah. you need that. I mean, I, I can yeah. see the backs of their heads. Maybe that'd be okay. But like, I feel like it's, it's letting the viewer at home know how they should be feeling or know that they're not alone and feeling that way. And it's just, it makes me, a, yeah, I'm sure that it has something to do with me being, uh, you know, prob I, I got, I got problems, it, Brian. Do you feel the same way when you watch like a comedy special and they cut away the audience laughing? Yeah. I hate oh. it. I hate well, it. Well, it just answer the question. Well, I mean, I, I said it before you asked it. Just answer the question. I'm a magician. I'm an illusionist. I answered the question before you asked it. That's, I am, that's I am impressive. The, you, are the, you are the Rulatista. I am the Rulatista. Every, every night I do a show with you, I feel like a Rulatista. All right, here we go. Uh, I got one more movie. Brian, what do you got? I have one more as well. Why don't you go first? I, I, should, go, I should go first because uh, mine was just okay. Uh, but it's timely and it's a big movie. It's one of the only big movies that kind of feel like come out, uh, mm. come out, comes out these days. So I will talk quickly about no. Palmer. Palmer. What? Oh, I thought it was Palmer. Gonna be little things. Pa Palmer. Pa no, I didn't. I, uh, I've heard bad things. Got a very, I love the log line. The log line is like uh, two cops to hunt down a serial killer. Like that's it. That's all it says. It's like you no know, bare bones, meat and potatoes type of, you know, high concept movie. And uh, I saw a pro promotion for this movie, like on local news or something. It was on in the background. And uh, they were talking to Rami Malik, Malik, Malik. 
uh, about it. And then they showed a couple, you know, clips and he was kind of talking about it, about it. And it, it looked like bad CSI made for my, my mom. I mean, mom doesn't listen to this, so I, I'm not going to worry about hurting her feelings, but she watches that kind of shit that's overlit and hacky and hokey. And it felt like that. And it looked like that. I'm like, Oh my God, this movie's awful. I will never watch the little things. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I, I have no, um, yeah. I have little interest. Mm -hmm. However, I did see Palmer the day it came out. Palmer, 2021 film directed by Fisher Stevens. Yes, Johnny Five, Fisher Stevens, uh, starring Justin Timberlake as the titular Palmer, uh, co-starring Ryder Allen uh, as Sam. He uh, is excellent. Ryder Allen is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of... 12 years old, 11 years old. He, he, he was, he was solid. I really liked Ryder Allen a lot as Sam. Alicia Wainwright, Juno Temple and June Squibb also star in this film. 75% on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, and this is streaming on Apple TV plus Apple TV plus. You can see Palmer. Hmm. So Palmer's the story. It's a very, um, I'm using story in quotes because, uh, it is a very, um, how do I put this? A light, it, it's a character study, Anderson. It's a character study, mm. very light narrative, light, a very, mm -hmm. very, very light narrative. Uh, the story basically is Justin Timberlake is playing this uh, uh, dude, this sort of redneck dude who's just got released from prison. Mm -hmm. He comes home to uh, live with his uh, grandma, I guess, Dune Squib, uh, a, 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 upon his release from prison. Does he call she her Mama? No, I think it's just grandma. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not it's not quite that backwoods. Um, June Squibb has uh, someone living on her property, Juno Temple and her son, Ryder Allen, Sam, mm -hmm. the aforementioned Sam, who I like quite a bit. Uh, Sam is a... Uh, the, the, the most interesting part of the story, which I'm glad they... I mean, it's right on the edge of being belabored, but I think they fell on the side of just, Oh, there's just enough. Like Sam is very obviously gay. He's, he's, he likes dressing up in, you know, dresses and he likes dressing up in girls clothes. He, he's obsessed with this, um, like almost like a my little pony a fairy show no, no i'm making a joke here it's like actually about fairies on uh tv he's a, he's like a he brony to, in the uh, making he wants he wants to join the fan club. Mm -hmm. He he's a, he was he. They would call him fancy, a fancy lad uh, in the uh, in certain parts of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, Justin Timberlake's character Palmer sort of uh, oh. takes him under his wing. They call him a palm if they're in Australia, or they call him a poofta mm -hmm. if they're in uh, the UK. And his name's really? Palmer. Look at that. Interesting. Mm. So it becomes a sort of odd couple. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the hardened, you know, just released from prison uh, guy who's trying to turn his life around mm. is uh, now sort of protecting this oh. uh, young fancy lad. So what you're saying is it's entirely uh, unique and like nothing you've ever seen before. No, that's unfortunately oh. not the case. Oh. Uh, it's very, very familiar. Um it, so this is an above average movie, but it's three stars out of five. Uh, if you love Justin Timberlake and you got to see him on the screen, maybe this is one to check out. How much um, singing it does is he do? not none. It is not beyond the realm of possibility, Anderson, that Justin Timberlake uh, might get maybe a Oscar nomination for Palmer. No. He is quite excellent, and uh, I have to give him his due. He he has got. He has gone from the uh, noodle-haired dork from uh, '90s boy band to a legit, like, good actor and a movie star. Like, he he, he owns the screen. Is this he chooses scenery? Is this the one where he's uh, got the tiger tattoo? Does he have a tiger tattoo? He has a beard. I don't know if he has a tiger tattoo or not. It's kind of like Bad Santa meets Sling Blade, but with like zero laughs. Um, and with no, uh, no, uh, what's his name? Who's in both of Billy those? Bob? Oh, Billy uh, Dwight Yoakam. Well, no, Billy Bob. Gotcha. It's funny you, you mentioned two Billy Bob movies. Billy Bob movies. That's right. Mm. Uh, so Palmer is mm. good. I just can't say it's great. I don't know great. if you uh, if it's worth signing up for an Apple TV subscription or trial just for this. But uh, you're not going to waste your time. But it's not great. So uh, just know that going into it. I mean, it, it almost feels like practice at, at at times, right? Like like I picture I picture him saying, "I'd like to play somebody hard." It feels like an acting exercise. Yeah. And he yeah. did really well. Like he, he was convincing and I totally bought it. You know, this is the, the little weenie from, you know, in sync and he mm. was menacing. Yeah. All right. Uh, I saw a film to wrap this baby up. And this is one that, where is this one streaming? Brian, could, could you, where did I see this? Where did I where see? Did, where did I see this? Where did I see another round? Another round. Oh, I think it's, do? I think it's a uh, rental only. 
think I According to uh, Just Roger Watch, Roger. yes, it can be rented for uh, five bucks. Thomas across multiple, Vinter- multiple platforms. Thomas Vinterberg directed this one. Uh, it's been a while since I've talked about Thomas Vinterberg. Uh, Thomas Vinterberg directed uh, a little movie that I absolutely love called The Celebration uh, from years ago. What about ago. The Hunt? A dog, a dog, my 95 movie. And then, yes, Brian, The Hunt. Sorry, you, you uh, hadn't got there. No, I had not been there yet. And uh, you just, uh, it's all right. I appreciate uh, your, I, I, I like you being involved with it. Not The Hunt from last year uh, no. with, my, with, my, with my lady, Betty Gilpin. God, I love her. I have not seen her in months because I haven't seen the hunt in months, but God, I love that Betty Gilpin and they, they canceled glow and it hurts me, Brian. It hurts me. Uh, I should also say that, um, glow, uh, one of the wrestlers in glow, the TV show that's now defunct, uh, she, she uh, the wolf, the wolf one, the wolf lady, <laughs> wolf girl. She was, uh, the love interest Wolfie? Wolfie? Uh, at one point in the climb. That was the only other actor. And then Norm from uh, cheers was also in there. All right. Uh, that was the the climb. Sorry, going back. Now I'm back you're to. Talking, are you talking about the hunt, or uh, also known as Yankton? Yankton, yes. The hunt about a uh, the, the kindergarten teacher with Mads Mikkelsen, uh, who I've been told uh, the S is silent, so it's just Mad Mikkelsen. I'm not, you know what? I will never pronounce it Mad. I'm with you. I he will always be Mads. Always, always Mads. So Mads Mikkelsen is fantastic. This is a Danish film, and uh, they speak. Uh, you got to read this movie, it's subtext. But here's, here's the long and the short of it, Brian. It's um, about these teachers, these high school teachers who are all kind of burnt out, different levels of burnt out, uh, and they're you know going about their life. It, it centers Wait, around Mads can Mikkelsen. I, can I, can I, I want to pause this real quick because I'm looking at, uh, I'm looking at uh, Wikipedia, and they have, a, um, they have a phonetic spelling of his name. Actually, oh, can, Anderson, go to Wikipedia. You can do this off your laptop, right? Go to Wikipedia. There's a little listen link right there after his name, and it'll, it'll pronounce it for you. I'm guessing the D is silent because it looks like an M, uh, A, E kind of schwa, and then an S. But I would like you to go to Maz Mickelson's Wikipedia page, uh, and like the fifth word in is like listen, and I want to hear what it says. Maz Mickelson. He said Matt. Maz Mickelson. He's just. I mean, he changes his whole name. Maz Mickelson. Maz Mickelson. Let's talk Mads about the Mads movie. Mads. He's saying Maz Mickelson. So it's about these uh, these teachers. Uh, like I said, high school teachers, and uh, they're all kind of uh, burnt out, different levels of burnt out. Uh, Mads is uh, the most burnt out uh, of them all, probably. His, his, his marriage is, is failing, and uh, he's just, he, he doesn't have, you know, he's just kind of going through life like a lot of people. Like, they're just almost like zombies. They're just going through the paces, and they, they're not who they used to be because their life didn't turn out the way they wanted to be. And uh, one of the teachers in this small circle of, like, uh, five guys, they says uh, they, they had been reading something recently that uh, a philosopher, like, this, this, this thinker uh, decide, suggested that everyone's people are born with a 0.05% uh, alcohol deficiency. All right. So you're going you to constantly try and fix that? So this group of high school teachers decided to give it a go. And they decide to uh, see if there's any truth to that. And perhaps because they're so goddamn bored, perhaps because they think that maybe there's something to it. And let me just say, Brian, one thing uh, leads to another and uh, things are uh, things are working out for some of them. For some of them, not so much. It's very interesting. It's very fun at times. Uh, and the thing that sticks with me most that will always stick with me is the end of this movie, which is... A real left turn from how you would imagine a movie like this to end. It's a very European movie, and uh, that's that's um, with an exclamation mark uh, as far as the the ending goes. I mean, it's a European. It's like European because it's Easy, the, like like Easy. if this was an American movie, uh, I think that it would have um, <laughs> it, it would have been a talking point, and uh, there would be a lot of angry um, uh, newscasters explaining to us why we should not like this movie. <laughs> I can see that. I can All see right. that. I, I'm very curious. Check it out. Another round. I uh, recommend it. And I would like to also say, Brian, you have not seen this, but I do believe as a child, as a, as a youth, 
that uh, we were all uh, had at least 0.05 uh, alcohol deficiency. And I remember trying to drink in eighth grade and trying to, I, I would bring Snapple bottles uh, with half vodka, half Snapple. And I tried to drink through the day. I've, I've told you this story or I've, I've talked about this before and it didn't go well. Uh, I, I, uh, I had a lot more admiration and respect for, for alcoholics. I, I understand that it's disease and you don't have to tell me that twice. I worked with uh, Dr. Drew for 17 years I, and I have family members who uh, suffer from it. Uh, but I, at the same time, you know, people scoff at the funny, you know, stumbling drunk, the stumble bum. And, you know, it, it takes a lot of work well, in fortitude. Nothing's funnier test- than how the drunk is portrayed in like old movies. Like, old oh, movies, yeah. there the he is. He's the guy that's just always stumbling around the neighborhood. Isn't he funny? They still do that in like uh, foreign films sometimes. But, uh, you know, it took like I was a young man, Brian. I was like 15 years old and I was just always tired and sick. And I tried it for like a week and a half, two weeks. But I'm like, I feel good in the morning. I like having this buzz at school. But then like by lunch, I'm just like, I just want to take a nap. Like, they got a lot of uh, they put up with a lot, you know? Yeah, it's um, not an easy existence. So point, point oh five isn't actually that much, though, right? That's like a light buzz. Yeah, that's enough to get you a DUI, though. No, point, the point oh eight was the. I think they moved the it to 0.05. Really? Well, I have not. Uh, it's like a drink and a half, essentially. I haven't dr- drank and drive in, in a few weeks at least, so I mm-hmm. got to check the law. Brian, it's never funny. Mm. It's never funny. No, it's not funny. I feel like with your uh, condition, anytime you're behind the wheel, you're a liability. That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, in the age of Uber and Lyft, I understand what's going on with COVID these days, and that's maybe compromising things, but why is there any excuse to, to, to drive drunk? Uh, you mean with everyone having easy access to Uber? Access because people to a don't very cheap car ride. People still don't want to leave their car, like you know, across town. Plus, you know what? I don't know about so other they places. Find themselves out and like yeah. Okay. But uh, L.A. in particular, especially in neighborhoods where there's bars and stuff, they have strict like no parking after two a.m. So like, let's say you do go to a bar. I've noticed this all the time, and it infuriates me. Let's say you go to a bar, you have a few drinks, you know, you're not really anticipating. It, and the next thing you know, you're like, ah, I'll just take an Uber. And then you go out to your, you know, to get the stuff that you need from your car. You look up at the sign, and it says no parking at two a.m. Tow away. You're like, what the fuck? Why two a.m.? Why right when the bars let out are you not allowed to park there anymore? Hmm? That's, huh? the ma- that's, hmm? ma- that's the magic hour. Hey, you know what, buddy? I missed Two to six. To bars. Two to six. To bars. Let's see when we go to a bar when this is all over. That's someone's vehicle? That's somebody's vehicle? Someone's- <laughs> that actually happened. All How right, many bars that- are you not allowed at? Uh, only one. And oh. I think I'm fine there now. Hey, Brian, those we days are test- over, buddy. Those days are test over. that out. We should test that out there. I don't even know. That guy doesn't even own that bar anymore. He moved. He moved to the Nashville. Sweet. Yeah. But that bar's closed because of COVID. So, all right. Are you done talking about uh, another round? Another round. round. Thomas Vintenberg. Hey, Brian, you have not seen the celebration, have you? I have not seen the celebration. I know that uh, another round has been submitted as Denmark's uh, submission for best foreign film at the Oscars. I don't don't see it getting a, a nod. But who knows? Really? Who knows? I mean, it's not, it's not nearly, uh, it, it's not about the time nearly enough. It's not, uh, doesn't have it's enough social timely. commentary, gotcha. timely, political. Yeah. It's just some jackasses trying to uh, make their life a little spicier with booze. <laughs> with <powder. laughs> oh, That sounds fun. Yeah. All right, buddy. Are we all wrapped up on this one? We are. We're wrapped. Wrapped. Uh, guys, good news. So if you're a Patreon member, uh, next you will hear top five stock market scenes. Uh, if you're uh, listening to the regular feed, top five stock market scenes can be heard Friday. Uh, I don't know about you, Anderson. I put a lot of research into this one uh, because the stock market is something I don't understand completely. So, I learned a lot. I learned a bunch. Uh, yeah, I was not anticipating a lesson, but I got one. Listen to two uh, clueless idiots talk about things they don't know about uh, this Friday. Hey, hey, we were a former, we're former clueless idiots. Now I feel yes, like I'm were. ready to uh, to go out there and invest. We have at least a clue. Uh, thanks uh, everyone for being a listener, especially our Patreon listeners. Uh, Giovanni, thanks for your help with gambling. We promise we're going to get to it next week, right? Or no, sorry, next episode. Yeah, uh, we'll do that on the next episode. Uh, Jordan Wolf, Mitch Burns. Well. We should start separating these out because one does the listener talk. I don't care. The, they, the least we could do is thank them every episode. They do a lot of work That's for us. That's a good point. That's a really good point. Thanks, Jordan Wolf and Mitch Burns. Mike Cole for keeping track of all of our uh, gambling stats. And, of course, uh, Robert J- Jarosinski. Robert Jarosinski. Jarosinski, yeah. And you know what? Speaking of which. The Climb. That's right. The Climb. With the, with, and up next 
is the painted wagon thanks to our friend Tyler Mayer. So thanks, Tyler Mayer, for giving us only assigning us a two hour and forty five minute movie, which we okay. will tackle uh, for next week's episode. Bad timing too, because we're doing the Patreon bonus episode next week too. So I uh, got a lot of work. The painted wagon. Wagon. Painted wagon. All right, throw it to me. Throw now, it to me. It called paint? Throw it to me. Isn't it called paint your wagon? Paint your wagon. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, well, hold on. Let okay, me see. Is this? No. Stars. Of course, stars. Kill the it. painted wagon. All right, buddy. Uh, until Christ. next time, everyone. I I'm still reeling from calling it the painted wagon. Paint your wagon. Paint your wagon for the. <sighs> we do it for Van Gogh. <laughs>